Welcome to ETAP Digital Innovations Day, Transmission, Distribution, and Microgrids. My name is Mohammed Zada, and today I'm introducing ETAP Microgrid Solution. First of all, ETAP is a simulation and analysis software for power system. And as part of the basic power system analysis, we support load flow, short circuit, and harmonic analysis for microgrid applications. But on top of that, we offer very specific modules that help to perform studies where there is an application of renewables, especially microgrids. That includes quasi-dynamic load flow and transient stability analysis. So let's quickly take a look what we do in uh, quasi-dynamic load flow analysis. We do time series load flow with controllers such as microgrid controllers in action. We can use this module to do the design and feasibility study. We can use it to kind of analyze the different profiles for renewables and see basically how the energy storage can be charged and discharged to achieve a certain objective. So that can be used for energy storage sizing. We also can use a microgrid control system as part of the quasi-dynamic load flow analysis when we are looking at a, a long uh, time horizon and find the optimal microgrid set points. We can use the quasi-dynamic load flow again for performing grid code studies if you are trying to draw the PQ or QV capability curves to determine the size and ratings of various uh, reactive power uh, devices such as capacitors or statcoms or even inverter-based resources. Also, uh, ETAP offers uh, transit stability analysis where a user can model a microgrid and perform the transition between grid connected uh, and islanded modes. Uh, in transit stability analysis also, we can do grid code studies, especially voltage and frequency right through studies, uh, as well as user can use the transit stability analysis to perform grid stability, uh, especially uh, the interactions between the controllers of the renewables, the DERs, and then uh, other controllers within the system. Now, as per IEEE standard 2030.7, which was released in 2017, a microgrid control system is a system that manages microgrid, uh, operates microgrid autonomously, uh, connects and disconnects microgrids from the main grid. So it provides the uh, transitions between the modes, dif two different modes of operations. Also, it manages microgrid energy. Now, if the uh, microgrid control system is implemented in form of a centralized system, which is uh, typical these days, then basically we are dealing in with a device called microgrid controller. Now, ETAB microgrid control solution has uh, two main components, a microgrid controller, as you see on the top, and then there is an ICE gateway with a built-in uh, fast, simple PLC in this gateway. What these two pieces uh, does for us is that the top device, which is a microgrid solution, does most of the work, and the gateway with the built-in PLC just does two important things. Number one, it takes care of the uh, converting the different type of protocols. Uh, this means that there could be many different type of the protocols for the DRs or assets in the system. So that's the first thing it does to do that. Also, if there is a hard wire or a special uh, wiring or uh, analog channels that's needed to uh, sometimes read the status of the circuit breaker, the point of interconnection or things like that, that gateway can become handy because uh, it has both communication base or ethernet base as well as hardwire connections uh, to interface with the rest of the system. The second job of this gateway is basically is to run the, the load shedding strategy or the uh, intelligent load shedding. A uh, mockery controller, besides all the functions that it does that we'll discuss, it every few seconds it drives the optimal islanding transition scheme based on the system condition how much renewables are in the system how much loads are in the system what assets do we have uh, how much a state of charge is available in the energy storage and send out a strategy into the gateway ready that upon the trigger by the uh, basically the id at the point of interconnection uh, to declare that oh it's a loss of grid or a circuit breaker at the point of interconnection trip 
then it's going to act in few milliseconds to do the load shedding in most of the cases in cases that uh, we are exporting power if it's allowed we may do even generation shedding as well also it brings up the a grid forming device which is the energy storage or if there is a generator up and running uh, to grid forming and it does a bunch of stuff as well so uh, keep in mind that this kind of dual hardware allows us to have things running in the few milliseconds for a high speed seamless eye landing as well as allows us to use a high performance uh, industrial computer here that runs a ETAB microgrid controller that does very advanced stuff in terms of the forecasting, optimizations, and many other things to make sure that microgrid runs in a very optimal fashion. One of the very unique feature of ETAB microgrid controller is that it's a model driven. It means that the process of using ETAB microgrid starts with the ETAB software where we have the microgrid model. So let me just quickly show ETAP here. So this is, let's say, a microgrid. We have the grid, point of interconnections. We have, my, let's say, my wind, PV, battery, and load. So we start with the model, a uh, model of the microgrid. The second things we have here is that we have also the digital twin of the ETAP microgrid controller. So we have this digital twin of the ETAB microgrid controller. And you see that we have a digital twin of the entire system, all your renewable assets, DRs, loads. On top of that, you have a digital twin of your microgrid controller, the gateway that is in front of the microgrid controller. And uh, if you have a sync check relay, we have a digital twin of that as well. So everything starts from the modeling where you can start your design from that stage. And as you do the modeling, run the system, and you're happy with it, then we go all the way to the hardware implementations. The same digital twin run, runs in the software simulation, goes into the hardware, and will be utilized in the field. So we go all the way from design to operation. And in this process, microgrid controller is fully aware of basically the entire system it knows that this is my microgrid and all the informations are known to the microgrid controller the model of the system and microgrid controller can use that model to perform nice stuff another key feature of ETA microgrid controller is that it's not a plc based solution is a software based solution this means that we have a software that based on the model understands the system and it has a built-in functions that has lots of features uh, as we'll discuss advanced functions and this allows to minimize the amount of testing that's required typically plc based every time you need to adjust or adapt the logic but in etab is a software base you don't need to adjust the logic or anything typically you just set the mockery controller configure it and test it and put it into the uh, field so that minimizes the amount of uh, uh, advanced testing that's typically a plc based mockery controller requires as we discussed it has an identical digital doing the same code that runs in the software it's in the hardware so by default you're going to get the model true model of an ETAB microgrid controller and the reason that it has this feature is that it's based on the cross-platform technology that runs both in Windows and in the Linux so hardware runs in Linux software runs in Windows and the technology used for this microgrid controller is a cross-platform it allows the same code to be used uh, both in simulation and in the hardware. The built-in functions that we offer for our microgrid controller uh, meets all these functions specified in IEEE 2030.7. Uh, we offer grid connected functions like limits for the active power at the point of interconnection, reactive power control, Q, V, power factor, you can control that at the point of interconnections. In order to dispatch the assets, especially uh, energy storage, we have both optimal and rule-based dispatches. I'll go through that and I'll show you examples of that. We have both planned and unplanned islanding functions, black start, islanded operation, reconnect to the grid, renewable smoothing, load and generation forecast. So let me go spend a few minutes, go through some of these functions and demonstrate uh, how they work, what they do. Let's just start with a simple grid connected mode of operation. So if I go again to my microgrid controller, this is a digital twin of that microgrid controller, go to the active power controller, you see that we have a point of interconnection limits. So we have 
uh, means to control how much power we can export. So let's say in this case, we do not want to export any power. We want to limit the export power to zero. We want also, let's say as part of the import power, we want to limit the import power to 60%. But if that's the desired situation or in the grid connected, we do not, if you have a generator, we don't want to utilize generator. Generator is, let's say, only backup for the islanded mode of operation. We have a rule-based dispatch to run this system and make sure that we do not actually violate this case. So let's look at the certain scenario that I'm trying to run here. I would like to run for 24 hours of simulation with, let's say, 15 minutes uh, resolution. Uh, all the data for my renewables coming from, let's say, external file. The data for the renewables can come in ETAB either to the profile library Let's say you can have a profile for your solar or your wind speed and ETAP calculates the power or you can have it to an external file in an Excel format. If you have the data, you can bring it here and run it. So I'm going to run for the 24 hours of simulation uh, and see how the microgrid controller behaves and commands the assets in the system. So I'm going to run it from the scenarios that I've created, rule base, run. I'm going to go ahead and plot the, the power at the point of interconnection uh, and uh, also my renewable generations and loads. Let's plot this um, active power of these assets. Let me bring this here. There we go. So what we see here, let me just quickly uncheck everything and go one at a time. So I have, this is my profile of the wind power generation. This is my uh, solar. Okay, you see that this is my solar. And let me just disable both of them and focus on the load. And you see that I have the load. Uh, in the morning, the load drops in the early morning and it increases as the time goes through the evenings and the nights. Now, if you look at the tight cable and the battery here, you see that in certain hours in the early morning where you have the wind, but you do not have enough load, if we do not charge the battery, we may end up exporting power. But at that time, the microgrid controller is going to look at the uh, microgrid and says that, oh, we are, we are going to export power, so, and I'm supposed to limit it, so it's going to charge, command to charge the battery at this point, and basically make sure that we're not exporting power to the grid. So if I show that here, we are almost zero, we're not exporting power to the grid. And also when we come to the 60%, this is a three megawatt microgrid, 60% about 2.4. Then we reach around 2.4. What happens is that it's gonna use the energy stored in the battery and make sure that we do kind of peak shaving. But keep in mind that in this scenario, uh, which is a very simple case, there is not enough uh, energy charge here to discharge here. If you have more opportunity to charge here, we would discharge more, okay? Now let me close this case and go look at another function that we have, which is called optimal dispatch. In the optimal dispatch, we are gonna run uh, optimizations with the optimization horizon of 24 hours. We're gonna run it every 15 minutes. And let's say, let's, uh, Let's go to the optimization revisions that I'm enabling optimization. So we look at that one. There you go. We have an optimization uh, every 15 minutes for 24 hours. Now in the optimization, what we do, we say that, okay, uh, I have also time of use rates for this microgrid. Uh, we say that, okay, we have a summer season, we have a winter season, weekday weekends, and we define what's the price of electricity. This is I've taken from uh, Southern California Edison. Uh, these are the prices for the summer season and the winter season and we have the prices here. Now what happens is that the microgrid controller is going to look at these prices and makes a decision when is the best time to charge and discharge the energy storage to minimize the uh, electricity uh, imported from the grid or purchased from the grid. So I've already ran this case. Let's go and take a look at the uh, response of the system at the AC cable. And let's look at the battery performance first. Let me put the battery and tie cable both together. Let me just for the sake of looking at it first, you see that there's a difference between what the optimization does. You see that in optimization, we do almost the same thing. When there is an export power uh, limit, we charge the battery to make sure that we are not exporting power to the grid. So optimal dispatch still has that constraint. 
but at the same time uh, the um, macro grid looks at the price here and says that oh the price is actually we are charging here uh, basically between three to four o'clock uh, the electricity price uh, is cheap so let's go and buy electricity and do the peak shaving so if i go and show the tie cable you see here is that we have more peak shaving based on the electricity price variations that we have in a day so optimal dispatch does a better job as compared of the rule-based dispatch so minimizes the price of electricity imported by the macro grid now we look at a little bit of the active power now let's look at the what happens when we try to go to the islanded mode of operation so so far we just ran a quasi dynamic uh, load flow analysis now let's go ahead and run another case where we are running transient stability so in this scenario what happens is that we're going to lose the uh, grid and after we lose the grid uh, load shedding happens and macro grid is going to sustain so as we go through the scenarios we are at about 10.95 we're going to lose the first of all the grid connection and then after 50 milliseconds the circuit breaker at point of interconnection is going to trip these are all done let's say by id at the point of interconnection now within this first 10 seconds what has happened is that the macro grid controller has a function called unplanned islanding so if i go to this unplanned islanding the macro grid controller knows that if we want to go islanding it has to put the battery in a grid forming if the power that we are importing is not above 70 percent still it can do load shedding so there is no need for blackout some reserve margin needs to be manned and some other settings i don't want to go through the details at this point but macro grid controller has an unplanned eye landing that every five seconds that is settable it passes the strategy for load shedding or a strategy for transition to the islanded mode to the, this gateway okay so within zero to ten has two times opportunity to do that and looks at the import power just prior to the islanding so it looks at oh we are importing 2.4 megawatt and based on 2.4 and the reserve margin that we need it's going to make a decision that let's say three loads needs to be shut now where that coming from again the macro grid settings there are settings related to the load shedding load priorities that load should be shed based on this priority load five four three two one and what happens is that it passed that to the gateway and gateway is ready the moment gateway receives that there is a breaker trip here it's going to immediately trip the load five four three and disconnect these loads to do the load shedding once it does that it also switches the battery to the grid forming okay so if i go back right now and let's say plot my bus voltage at the uh, point of interconnection and frequency you see that both bus voltage and frequency comes back to the nominal voltage and nominal frequency whatever it was before and we basically the the mercury control does a good job in terms of facilitating a seamless eye landing one other things I would like to try here is this reconnect scenario. Let me run this reconnect. In the reconnect, we have a very similar scenario. After we disconnect from the system, we do the load shedding stuff, we disconnect from the system. Then the system, the grid, circuit breaker gets closed, the voltage becomes healthy. And then the macro grid controller is going to evaluate the system. And if the grid is stable, it's going to inform the sync check relay to close. And sync check relay monitors the voltage, magnitude, angles, looks at the frequency. And once it finds a suitable point, it's going to close the circuit breaker. Okay, now let's look at the uh, response of the system for this event. So, what I have here is that at the again 10.95, I'm going to lose the grid circuit breaker then the cb at the macro grid side is going to trip uh, we're going to do the load shadings and then we're going to trip the uh, circuit breaker. we're going to close the circuit breaker on the grid side and then the macro grid controller is keeps monitoring the grid side as you see here uh, at 30 seconds once the grid is monitored it's going to monitor and if the grid voltage is stable within let's say in this scenario 10 seconds it's going to inform let me show that settings to you quickly if if it's stable for the 10 seconds it's going to inform the scene check relay that 
it's ready, you can go and close. And scene check relay is gonna monitor the angles. Once both angles are within the same uh, proper range, if the voltage magnitudes are in the proper range or the uh, frequency is the proper range or sleep of frequency and angles, then it's gonna close the circuit breaker. So in this case, it's gonna reconnect and we go back again to the grid connected mode. Now that we are happy with the performance of the micro grid controller in the simulation, now we go back again to the ETA micro controller and say that, okay, I'm going to put the actual IP address of the gateway uh, that's supposed to do the communication. And from that gateway, the port number, the communication information gets set up. And once that's done, we go to this micro controller and we say that deploy. The deploy, what it does, it collects all the micro grid information, the logic, all the settings, uh, and puts them in a package in a file called MGC file. And this MGC file is ready. Now we can go and put the, go to the ETA Mockery controller to the game. It has a web client. You go to this deployment folder. Now we pick this MGC file and we upload it into the box. So once you upload this to the box, all the information that a Mockery controller needs to have to be operational is going to be in this box. One of the key advantages of using ETAP technology is that ETAP also provides an environment where ETAP can be executed as a hardware in the loop tester. And this is done with the minimum effort to prepare, means that ETAP can behave as a real-time micro grid simulator, and then actual hardware is gonna exchange data to the DMP3 with this micro grid controller. So let me just quickly show how this works. So we go in the ETAP. I've already set up a scenario for you guys to take a look at this. So if you look at this scenario, in the micro grid controller, there's a setting that if we set it to test the simulation mode. What's going to happen is that all the data from the macro grid will be collected, that is required by macro grid control, will be collected, passed through the communication to the DMP3 slave, and ready for the macro grid controller, which is a DMP3 master, to get that information, run the logic, and send the data out, the commands out, to back to ETAP where the data gets collected and passed to the components here. So basically, ETAP becomes like a real-time digital simulator where you can use it to test the actual hardware. So I'm going to run this scenario here. When I'm running here, I go back to my micro grid controller. So I can quickly go to my uh, all the metering data here in the micro grid controller. Micro grid. So what this happening is that it shows that we are importing 2.6 megawatt, everything is online. I quickly go to my micro grid and make sure that we are not in advisory mode. Means that the micro grid controller can send the command to. We are at 2.6 and in this situation, if I go and look at my unplanned eye landing, it tells me that line 543 should be shed and my battery should go to the grid forming. So as you expect, all the information you are expecting in the simulation will show up here as well. Let me put this in five seconds. As you see here, what's happening is that we have 2.4 megawatt at this point. We are grid connected. And after a few, probably after two minutes of simulation or less, about 100 seconds we added, we are expecting to go to the islanded mode where we are going to see that this goes to off. And as we were expecting, we need to go to the unplanned uh, eye landing. We need to shed certain things and make sure that the micro grid stays stable. So let's wait a little bit here and see if this happens. So you see that this went to zero kilowatt. And let me just refresh here. We went to the off mode. So we are now eye landed. And if I look at loads uh, in the system, we see that the loads actually, we lost the loads that we are looking at, lump five and three, four, we lost them due to the load shedding. But the steel micro grid is a stable, and you see the grid came back. Now the grid voltage is back to the 100%, means grid is healthy. And what we're expecting at this point is that micro grid controller after 10 seconds informed the sync check relay that the grid is stable, frequency is good, voltage is good, and then sync check relay can go and connect the grid back. So you see that we got the grid connection. 
But as you see here is that overall performance of the microgrid controller, ETAB microgrid controller can be tested both in simulation as well as hardware in the loop test in a very quick manner. Uh, and user, the ETAB is, we made the microgrid control technology in a way that it creates its own uh, test setup and it's easy to test and validate its performance. With that, I really appreciate your time and attention.